Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall, Psychic, all the way from the Gold Coast. So wherever you are in this amazing planet of ours, I hope you've had an absolutely sensational and awesome week. Here in Australia, it's been a mixed bag as it always is, as I'm sure it is around the world, you know, between politicians making fools of themselves and weather events and just life happening in general. And I, I think that's sort of part of the magic of being alive, isn't it? We never really know what to expect from week to week. We have a general idea. And I have many friends and clients around the world who message me and tell me what's going on in their little neck of the woods. And, you know, some people are saying it's cold and some people are saying it's hot and some people are saying, gee, I'm looking forward to this or I'm looking forward to that. Some people are saying, I just like a rest. So I think no matter who you are or where you are in the world, I think sometimes we can all get overwhelmed. And it's sort of like it's our own body saying and our own soul saying to us just take a breath you know you are allowed to have a little rest every now and then to sit on the couch and do nothing have a cup of coffee stare out the window watch a movie listen to some music i think life has become so very very busy that we don't really give ourselves permission to just be and I know a lot of people talk about the younger generation being lazy and not as motivated as we were back in the good old days and all those sort of things. I don't know that I totally agree with that. Yes, the world is changing. Yes, we, we change the way that we look at things or how we deal with things or how we handle things. But I don't know whether any particular time period was any better than any other. I know for me now, I, I look at young people with young families and I think I don't know that I'd like to be in that predicament, in that situation with so much pressure on electronic devices and, you know, children can't freely walk to school anymore because of, you know, the dangers of other human beings of being, you know, hit by a car or taken by somebody or something. So I don't know that necessarily life is any better. I think in some ways it's a lot harder because there's just such a rush and such a pressure on everything that children can't just be children and go outside and play and come home when the lights come on. You know, it, it's a different society. It's a different world we live in. So therefore we shouldn't necessarily compare and say something was better or something's worse or whatever. This is where we are now and this is how society is and how life is and we have to adjust to that. And I think as human beings, we think we're pretty adaptable and we're pretty adjustable, but we're probably really not. We really do like things in our own way, in our own time, and we like to feel as if we're in control of our own destiny. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, what's my destiny? Well, destiny is one of those obscure sort of words. It means many different things to anybody, to different people. You know, whether you're talking about fate, destiny, karma, a lot of people roll all those words in together and they're not all the same. Karma is a very different situation to your destiny or your fate. And karma to me is lessons that we need to learn or things that we need to repay. It's like repaying a loan. We need to repay the karma. And, you know, when we repay the karmic debt, then we start to have karmic credits and good things start to happen in our lives. But not everything that happens to you in this lifetime that isn't pleasant or doesn't go your way is because you've got bad karma. It's just good, but simply it's part of life. You know, we all have lessons to learn. We all have situations that we get ourselves into and say, gee, if I'd maybe handled that a different way, I would have had a different outcome. And that's part of being human and learning. When we talk about, destiny and fate that's a very very different thing look i mean until i got into astrology 40 odd years ago i truly did believe we were in control of our own destiny or our own destination and the more I studied astrology and the more I learned about it, the more I realized that we were just like pawns on a chessboard. We, you know, yes, we have free will. We have a choice if we come to a T intersection to turn right or left. And most people will have a, a preference that they do. If they don't know, they turn a certain way. So we are guided by, you know, the astrological influences, whether we believe in them or not, they are guiding us and helping us. And where our free will comes in is we make the decision of yes or no. So I hope that's clarified that a little bit for you. So moving on to the Simply Tarot card of the week this week, it's the chariot. Now the chariot is the card of movement of residence. Now not everybody that sees this card is going to be moving house this week. I appreciate that. For some of you, you may be taking a journey. But for most of us, it's a victory over a situation or a problem.
This might be something that you've been working on for a while or something that's been in your life for a while now that you've needed to sort of get on top of and you finally feel as if you're winning over the situation. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You can start to see things are going to start to move forward now. So it's called balancing the opposite polarities. Now, what I mean by that is that you're finally bringing things into balance. We're finding solutions because you're not just looking at it through one set of eyes, you're looking at it from both sides of the coin or both sides of the argument or both sides of the situation. And in that way, then you can find the balance, you can find the direction, you can find the way forward and finally be able to bring your life into balance over the situation. So this is a very positive card to come out in a reading. And it's a very powerful card because it means finally we are starting to see some positivity. And I think this is a really amazing card to come out for everybody around the world this week. It means finally, maybe we're getting some answers. Maybe we're starting to bring some balance back into your life in some sort of way that you're finally starting to feel, yes, I can breathe a little bit easier. My life is starting to go forward again. I mightn't be completely out of the woods, but I can see that there's certainly changes in the air and I feel as if I'm back in the driver's seat, as if I'm back in control of destiny or fate. So that's a really important way to look at it. So that's the, the chariot card. We're going to move on to the astrology section and this week is quite exciting because um, we've had a major energy shift this week. But anyway, we'll start at the beginning. The sun is in Pisces at the moment, so it's the Pisces time of the year, and I have many, 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 many Pisces friends. So happy birthday to all the Pisceans around the world. And I think even though I'm not a Pisces, I tend to attract a lot of Pisceans in my life, always have done, and I find their energy very magical. A lot of people write astrology up as, you know, the Pisces, oh, the two fish chasing their tail, can't make any sense of anything you know, they never really sort of bring balance in their life. I totally disagree with that. I look at the Pisces energy and I say, wow, because they have the ability to be flexible, that they can sort of absorb and understand lots of different energies, lots of different perspectives on life. And I look at it as being the final sign of the zodiac as being the most clever because they have the ability to look at the previous 11 signs and take the good, bad and the ugly and mould it into their way of thinking and say, well, I can adapt that or I can adapt this to get a better outcome. So in some ways, I think it's not the dustbin. To me, it's the, the part of the final sign of astrology that says, I have the power, I have the wisdom. I can see from all that's gone before me, the mistakes, the good, the bad, the indifferent that people have made. And I'm going to try and make a, maybe a better outcome or a different outcome or use that knowledge and power to my advantage. So happy birthday to all the Pisceans. So we have the sun in Pisces at the moment that is conjunct or holding hands, Neptune, the planet of illusion, delusion, creativity. Now, Neptune is the ruling planet of Pisces. It's only been considered a modern ruler in less than 100 years. It used to be co-ruled by Jupiter. But Neptune has been assigned to Pisces now and works very comfortably there because, again, it enhances that creativity, that sensitivity, that ability to daydream, to think outside the square, to look for an alternative solution or maybe five or six versions of a solution and then pick the one that feels the most comfortable. But you have that flexibility to keep changing and manoeuvring to get a better outcome all the way through. And I think that's really important. People just look at Neptune and say, oh, illusion or delusion, something to be concerned about. If we don't have illusions, if we don't have dreams or daydreams or think outside the square, how can we then get some better outcomes? Delusion sometimes is more about we're deluding ourselves than necessarily trying to deliberately delude somebody else or cheat somebody else out of something else. It's usually quite often it's a self-delusion where we're not looking at ourselves or the situation squarely. So that's where the word delusion comes in. Now, the exciting part of this week is the fact that Saturn, the planet of discipline, has finally left Aquarius after two and a half years. The Aquarians are all doing the happy dance, saying, yippee doodle dandy, I'm glad you're out of here. And it's not necessarily quite that bad. You know, Saturn is the planet of discipline. It is the planet of stickability. It's the, the planet that gives us the ability to see a venture through to the end, that we, you know, we don't lose our ability to be able to give it 
our all. And, you know, even when we think we've got nothing left to give, we find we've got even that little bit more in the reserve tank that we didn't know that we had. So the reason why I'm excited is Saturn has moved into Pisces. Now, what does this mean for Pisceans? I mean, yes, at the moment, for probably the next six months, it's going to seem at times where it's very, very difficult. It's going to seem as if their dreams, their wishes and things like that have got the brakes put on them. They might find that there's a little bit of opposition to things that they want to bring in or things that they want to change in their life. And if they're in public life, it might seem as if they're facing a little bit of uphill battle because people are against them. And it's not necessarily that they're against them. It's like they're what they stand for or what they believe in, whether they're in public life or just in ordinary, everyday, old, boring life like me, that they're being tested on their beliefs. People are going to question that. They're going to challenge it. They're going to say, how did you come up with that? And this is a great time for them to be able to show their skills, their negotiation skills, their ability to sort of take them on a journey that they may not have otherwise gone on because they were too busy sort of being cranky or getting frustrated or not understanding the situation. And with the Pisces calm, gentle sort of energy, they're able to sort of scoop them up and take them on this journey of discovery while they're explaining and defending their reasons that the, the other people sort of suddenly start to melt and sort of think, oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, mightn't agree with it, but I can see where you're coming from. And then all of a sudden up come the defences again and we start to pick on them again, but that's okay. The Piscean is, is intelligent enough and clever enough to know that's what's going to happen. So they're already ahead of you in that way. So for Pisceans, it's a time of knuckling down for the next two and a bit years, knuckling down, enjoying the energy, enjoying the fact that people are going to finally start to take you seriously. You're going to see that people are going in high places are going to be looking at you and sort of looking to you towards leadership. So if you are in a position where leadership is a potential or could be something that's on the horizon, make sure that you dress appropriately, you act accordingly and show, put your best foot forward, as people sort of say, and show them what you're made of. You don't need to go out there and blow your own horn and say, look at me. You just need to keep being yourself, keep doing your job, keep doing it in the diligent manner that you are and make sure that, you know, people sort of get swept up in that lovely, magical, mystical tour that you will be showing to them and you'll, they'll, they'll get on board your bus and they'll want to be part of it. So it's a very, very exciting time for Pisces. You know, Saturn moves through the signs roughly approximately every two years. So you're looking at Saturn doesn't come back around to be in your sign for close on 30 years. So, you know, you don't want to waste what the opportunities that Saturn brings to you in your, in your time. And particularly if you're a Pisces, it's absolutely amazing. If you're a Virgo, you're going to find that things are a little bit iffy. You know, there's going to be quite a bit of opposition to some of the things. You might have to work a little bit harder in this next two years to get people to notice what you're sort of trying to bring about or the things that you're trying to talk about because it is sitting opposite your Virgo sun. So we're now going to move on to Jupiter. Jupiter's in Aries. Now, Jupiter's been in Aries for a little while now. Now, it's, he's still asking Aries people to think big, dream big, act big, you know, get up off the couch. It's your time. Don't waste this energy. You've got opportunities for expansion, opportunities to bring new things into your life. Now, you've got Jupiter conjunct or holding hands with Chiron. Now, Chiron's not a planet. It's known as an Arabian part. And in astrology, it's known as the wounded healer. It's where we need to heal our ourselves. Now, Aries people have got to bring some form of healing into these new opportunities, these new expansions. And it could just be healing a bad feeling that if you've had to change a job or you've been forced to change a job during the pandemic or life through things at you that you weren't expecting, it's now your opportunity to heal that, to heal that rift in yourself, to sort of say, well, okay, I wasn't happy with it to begin with, but it's turned out to be the greatest blessing, the greatest gift that could have happened. Now, what you need to do is process that and work through it. It's really, really important that you do that because if you don't do that, then I don't think you're going to gain the maximum out of Jupiter sitting here in Aries. Now, Chiron is also conjunct or holding hands, Venus, the planet of love and affection. So what Venus's role here is to do is to try and soften everything up a little bit, sort of say, let's sprinkle a little bit of love on everything that we're trying to bring about. You know, if you're trying to get a new business off the ground or a new venture off the ground, don't forget the healing aspect of it. And don't forget to sprinkle it with love. You know, love makes the world go round. I know people say that, you know, money doesn't buy you happiness, but sure, it does make life a lot easier. Well, I believe love is the most important ingredient 
that we all need in our lives. And it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to be in a relationship to enjoy what love is. You know, love can be being passionate about your new venture. It can be passionate about your job. It can be passionate about your sport. You know, love comes in many different forms. But what is being asked here is if you particularly are an Aries and you're looking to bring in new situations or new opportunities in your life, don't waste it. You haven't got long now while, you know, Jupiter is changing in your sign because Jupiter only sits there for 12 months or a bit over 12 months in this case so you know you're nearing the end of it heal anything that needs to be healed but don't forget to sprinkle it with a bit of love and a bit of sunshine and things will certainly look a lot better in your life if you do so we still have Pluto sitting in Capricorn still asking us to sort of you know look at where the planet's going and what can we do in our small way to sort of contribute or help contribute to the the changes that need to happen with global warming it's also asking us to be very very aware of what politicians say and people in in high places we can't necessarily believe everything that they say sift through it and see what you believe and what you don't believe and then set a set your own agenda for what the rules are that you want to live by and don't be frightened to change your mind you know you might have one opinion today and then three weeks time you might have a completely different opinion because new information's come to light we are allowed to change our mind and progress with the time so remember that we're going to talk with mary Kay in greenwood in british columbia in canada are you there mary Kay? Yes, hello. Well, what a pretty name. How can I help you today? Do you have a question I can answer Thank for you, Mary Kay? Oh, oh boy. Um, I don't know. Can we just kind of go with whatever comes up? Yeah, sure. It's just that, you know, in the limited time we've got here, I, I like to make sure that I get to the, the issue that might be the most pressing for you. That's why I ask if you have a particular question. The first thing that they were showing me, Mary Kay, is that there's a number of endings, changes and transformations coming up. Have you been in this last 18 months really sort of working hard towards to bring change and improvement into your life and you've been fraught with nothing but sort of opposition obstacles people sort of don't understand your dream your vision and it's like now i feel absolutely utterly exhausted is that how it's been for you uh oh well, how about bought a bought a house started a job mm -hmm. all of us got laid off and now i'm like oh my god now what okay but do you feel as if in in the time that all this has been happening that as if you can't seem to take a trick you know it doesn't matter what step you put forward the universe has a different plan yes yeah look i'm not going to say that the universe hasn't got a different plan i mean you know sometimes things are sent to us and we don't quite understand at the time why or why is this happening what have i done wrong the first thing i want to say to you is mary Kay, you haven't done anything wrong that that's not what this is about it's not a punishment because you've done something wrong you know you haven't got bad karma or anything like that i do feel that it was the right decision to buy the house even though now that you haven't got you know as much income coming in because you lost the job there is another job coming and i don't think it's very far away I feel within the next couple of weeks and it might only start out to be a temporary position you know like you've got work for a month and you think oh is that really worth taking that on when it could prevent me from taking a full-time job look if, it, if the job feels right and you feel attracted to it take it at least a month's work is something and I feel out of that yeah. it's going to develop into something more I think it's you know initially yes that's all they've, they've offering you because that's all they can honestly offer you whoever it is that's gone off work whether they're sick or you know had a family crisis or whatever the reasons why they need somebody to fill in for a month that's going to change and the job will become yours so I don't want to see you sort of turn something down because you think oh it's only a month and it's you know is it worth the headache and the you know the disruption to my life Sometimes we've got to take those leaps of faith because we don't know where it's going to lead, lead us to. I do know by the time we get into the end of April, things are certainly looking a hell of a lot more rosy for you. And it's like you can exhale, you can breathe a sigh of relief and say, finally, I can see things are starting to go the direction that I need. I know we're only in you know early stages of March, 
But if you look at that, you know, being six weeks away to, from where we are now to that point, that's a pretty quick timeline to be able to get yourself back on track and feel like life is moving forward again. There is, you know, some really good things coming towards you this year. You've just got to have faith. Sometimes the universe seems to take a, a cruel turn to be able to move everything along quickly so that they can get us on the right path. And that's what you've got to believe. This is what's happening to you now, sweetie. And I know things are going to get a lot easier than what they were. They're also sort of, there's a, a lot of people um, on the other side that have sort of all been holding hands and holding their breath, just waiting for the good things to start happening for you. It's like, you know, you've got a lot of people helping you on the other side. So, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you feel like you've run a marathon and you know you've been asleep, maybe you've been over visiting and sort of visiting everybody and having cups of coffee and whatever, and that's why you feel so <laughs> tired. You've been talking all night, but you've got lots of help coming your way, sweetie. So I hope that's been of help to you. Say that again, please. I said, I hope that's been of help to you, sweetie. Good. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, Mary Kay, that's where we're going to leave it. We only have a short time to, to talk with people from around the world. We're going to talk with Diana in Billings in Montana in the USA. Are you there, Diana? Yes, I am. Do you have a question I can answer for you, sweetie? Yeah, I was um, trying to look for the love of my life, and I was just wondering if that love of, of my life is going to be coming into my life this year. Well, that's a really good question, Diana, because, you know, the first thing that I get around you is a, is a major, massive, big pink heart, and that usually indicates you love coming in. It's interesting, though, because I feel in a strange sort of way as if you've prevented it from coming in. And I don't mean you got out of bed and said, I don't want a relationship. I think emotionally you weren't ready yet to trust your own judgment. If someone was to come forward, at whether or not I can open myself up, am I ready to open myself up? Can I trust my own judgment? And that's okay. I mean, you know, I think there's times in our lives where we need to be a little bit skeptical that way that, you know, we've been hurt, we've been through situations that we don't want to repeat. So, you know, we sort of tend to protect ourselves a little bit. And that's what I feel you've been doing. And it's not a criticism. I think it's a good thing that you did that, Diana, because now you're ready to sort of, it's like, I can see you opening your arms up and saying, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive the new opportunities, the new potential love. You know, I want somebody that is not just going to be my lover. I want somebody to be my best friend, my partner, somebody I can laugh with, somebody I can cry with, somebody I can just be myself with. And I don't know that in the past that you've had all of that in one package. You've had it in bits and pieces in different relationships or different friendships or different people in your life, but you've never had it all in one package, have you? Yeah, you are correct. Spot on. Yeah. Yeah, so this time we're going to have it all in one package. And that, I think, is the magic of this, Diana. Look, I'd love to say, you know, you're going to meet Mr. Perfect next week. I don't think it's quite that soon. I'm sort of seeing the second half of this year. So I'm going to say from the beginning of June onwards, he's very tall. He's got dark hair. He's got dark eyes. He's, he's Caucasian. He's got the white skin. But he's got a, the most wicked, beautiful sense of humour. And I don't mean... Um, a sense of humour that you'd be embarrassed about. I mean, a sense of humour that, you know, you could take him to church, you could take him to visit your family and everybody think he was wonderful. That sort of sense of humour. I really like him. He's a decent guy. I think he's also been on his own for a couple of years because he came out of a very serious committed relationship, one that he thought was going to go the distance and he was blindsided by that, that it didn't work. And it took him a long time to sort of work through those emotions and look at what he was responsible for and, you know, how he didn't want to repeat that again and attract somebody that didn't have the same value systems that he had. I mean, he just wants somebody that in his life that he can trust, somebody that tells the truth, somebody that he can rely on, and that, you know, you both sort of have similar outlooks, you have similar principles, you've sort of got similar aims in life. And, you know, he's not expecting somebody to be perfect because nobody is but he just wants somebody that tells the truth and somebody you can have a laugh and a joke with but also somebody that takes life seriously 
and values the important things in life, you know, a, a, a honesty and friendship and family and, you know, being with somebody and wanting to be with someone. And it's going to be really easy this time, Diana, because you're so similar but different at the same time that you understand each other even without words. I'd be really surprised if you two ever had a, an argument with raised words. I'm not saying you won't have a disagreement, but most of the time you're able to sort of look put yourself in the other person's shoes and say, yeah, darling, look, I see where you're coming from, but I don't quite agree with it. Have you thought about this or have you thought about that? And you seem to be able to resolve conflict that way rather than a screaming argument, because that's the type of people that you are, that, you know, you, you are able to sort of value the other person's opinion. I think it's going to be a a slow growing relationship to begin with. You're both going to take your time, get to know each other, be a little bit old fashioned and, you know, have a nice little courtship before it moves into something more serious. But once it starts to move into something serious, I think then it's going to hurtle along at a very fast pace. And I'm going to say he's old fashioned, Diana. He won't live with you. He believes if we're going to do that, we get married. He, he's very adamant about that. He was brought up by parents who believed in the institution of marriage and he firmly believes in that too but he's a very very nice man I think the two of you are going to have lots of laughter lots of fun he has a good paying job and I think he lives probably about half an hour 40 minutes away from where you're currently living now so that's not going to be an issue it's going to be good so things are sort of certainly really sort of coming together for you Diana and you're going to be really really happy so the best of luck with your new love. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. So that's where we're going to leave Diana now in Billings in Montana. We've come to the end of the show again. And each week I sort of usually sort of, you know, leave you with a song and this week's not going to be any different. There's lots and lots of people around the world that have, uh, have got broken hearts or have lost somebody through death or, you know, different circumstances in their life. And it doesn't get any easier. You know, if you've lost somebody through death, which many people out there have, and I have many years ago, you know that birthdays, Christmases, Easter's, those sort of things are still a lonely place in your heart, even though you may have moved on and you've got a different life and, you know, a long time has gone past or a lot of water under the bridge, as people say. But I think we never really forget those people and we still like to remember remember their very special occasions. For me, it was my late husband's birthday yesterday here in Australia, today around the rest of the world. And I want to leave you with one of his favourite songs. And I know that this will resonate with many, many people around the world that have lost somebody or, you know, are away from their loved ones because of work or different things. So I want to leave you with the song by Leo Sayer, When I Need You. And it is a beautiful song and it's a lovely song and it's a song that, you know, lots of people can relate to because they are parted from the person that they love, whether it's through work or circumstances or they've passed on. So Leo Sayer and When I Need You, I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now.